Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear viewers, from today we begin the seventh topic in this saga of revisiting the collection and transmission history of the Quran. And the topic that we begin today relates to, the, uh, to a very important fact, and that is that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a very prominent companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, it is reported in certain narratives that he did not regard the Mu'avvizatayn or the last two surahs of the Quran to be part of the Quran and it is also reported that he would strike them off. So uh, in this uh, particular lecture series or this particular subtopic, I will inshallah review these uh, narratives uh, which regard uh, Abdullah ibn Masood to be not considering these two surahs to be part of the Quran. I shall also cite uh, uh, criticisms which have already been offered on these narratives by our earlier authorities and also present my viewpoint on them. So let me begin with a few representative texts in this regard and then we shall see how they have been uh, critically viewed by our previous authorities and then later on I shall present my own input as well. So uh, the first of these narratives is recorded in the Musnad of Ahmad ibn Hanbal and uh, the words are, it is reported by uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid, who was a student of uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So the words are, An Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid qal, Kana Abdullah yahukku al-mu'avvizatayn min masahifihi wa yaqool innahuma laysata min kitab Allahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. So Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would erase the mu'avvizatayn from his masahif and would say, they are not part of the book of God, the blessed and the mighty. A second similar narrative is reported by Zir ibn Hubaysh and uh, the words are An Zir ibn Hubaysh qal Kultu li Ubay ibn Ka'ab inna ibn Mas'ud kana la yaktubu al-mu'avvizatayn fi mushafihi faqal Ashhadu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhbarani anna Jibreel qala lahu Qul a'uzu bi rabbi al-falaq faqultuha qal Kul a'uzu bi rabbi al-nas faqultuha and uh, this narrative has also been recorded by uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Musnad. Uh, the translation is, Zir ibn Hubayr said, I told Ubay that Ibn Masood would not write the Mu'avvizatayn in his Mus'haf. Ubay said, I bear witness that the Prophet told me that Gabriel said to him, Kul a'uzu bi rabbil falaq. The Prophet said, I said these words. Gabriel then said, Kul a'uzu bi rabbil nas. The Prophet said, I read these words, thus we read what the Prophet read. So it is on the basis of uh, these uh, narratives and as we shall see uh, some of the other variants as well that it is uh, believed or it is alleged that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did not regard the last two surahs which are called the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran. Now in this regard there are two very prominent authorities who have uh, critically analyzed these narratives and shown to the best of their ability that they do not carry any significance and they are not uh, worthy of being considered. Uh, the first prominent authority in this regard is Abu Bakr ibn Tayyib al-Baqillani who in his Al-Intisar has uh, critically reviewed these narratives and has uh, uh, made his conclusion, has come to the conclusion that these narratives are not trustworthy. And the first critique that he offers is that it is quite against human practice and behavior and experience that if Abdullah ibn Masood uh, had not regarded the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran, that a debate would have ensued between him and the rest of the companions because the rest of the companions, it is known, all regard these two surahs to be part of the Quran. So why is it that no such debate is reported in history? He says that such is the gravity of the matter that if, we, if a person does not regard and a prominent companion of the Prophet does not regard to surahs of the Quran, to be part of the Quran, then uh, this would have been a cause of great alarm amongst the rest of the companions. They would have come to him, they would have asked him what the reason was that he's not regarding these surahs to be uh, part of the Quran. They would have even uh, gone on to censure him and rebuke him and to scold him that what's the reason that he's doing this. They would have uh, even gone on to call him an apostate or an unbeliever uh, because the gravity of the mat matter is such. So he says that all these debates should have been reported in history and this is all the more reason because debates which are of lesser import have been reported in history and thus for example he gives the uh, instance in which Abdullah ibn Mas'ud himself in the times of Caliph Usman Anhu, refused to hand over his mushaf uh, to the authorities and we know that Usman had launched a campaign 
to, uh, to gather all the Masahif uh, which he thought were spurious and had them destroyed. So when he sent his people to Abdullah ibn Masood, who was stationed in Kufa, he refused to hand them over. He did, not, uh, he, did, he did not like them to be handed them over and he outright refused. And this whole debate has been recorded in history in, uh, in a number of narratives. So he, Bakilani says that why is it that if this debate could have been recorded in history when he had refused to hand over the Musaf, so why would not this debate that he, he did not regard two important surahs to be part of the Quran uh, be recorded similarly in history and some debate should have come to the, to the foreground. This is his first point of critique. Now the second point of his critique is that he, th he says that such is the importance of this matter that since Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was differing with other companions, he should have offered a reason for this, that he does not regard these two surahs to be part of the Quran. He says that this is very unusual that a person is differing from the rest of the companions and he is not citing or giving any reason. It was imperative that he should have given his reason whatever he thought uh, the reason would be, but we find that there is no such a reason uh, being reported by him and this he says is very strange. Now the third point that he says is that uh, none of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's pupils have reported this issue from him and he cites uh, people like uh, for example Abida Salmani, Masruq ibn Ajda, al qama ibn Qais, Amir, Amr al-Shurahbil, Haris ibn Qais, al-Asfad ibn Yazid he says that all these students who are prominent, uh, very prominent authorities in themselves and uh, they should have actually reported something from Abdullah ibn Masood in this regard. They should have either reported that their teacher has corroborated this or rejected it. Whatever the, the case may be, uh, in case of a rejection, they should have reported that this, their teacher does not regard these two surahs to be part of the Quran, but this is not the case. So therefore it is something uh, very, very serious in this regard because students in those times were the transmitters of knowledge of their teachers and why is it that these students did not corroborate or reject uh, this view of uh, their, their teacher. And if they themselves did not ask this question uh, to the teacher or did not pose this question to the teacher, then, uh, and uh, although this is something very impossible, but he still says that he had, if this was the case, that he, even these students did not ask this question from their teacher as to why he is rejecting these surahs, then at least people around these students should have come forward and asked them that what is the view of their teacher and why is it that he is not regarding them to be part of the Quran. And if even this did not happen, he goes on to say then at least we, should we believe that the whole ummah in this regard had remained silent and did not come forward to ask what exactly was going on and should we believe that the whole ummah was standing on one side and not even asking this question from Abdullah ibn Masood. So he says that uh, this is something uh, very improbable and he also cites that two or a couple of his very important students have had actually regarded the Mu'awwizatayn to be part of the Quran and he cites those narratives. Thus, for example, he cites uh, Al-Aswad's narrative from, the, uh, from uh, a source, although he is not uh, a reported its source, but it is uh, Ibn Abi Shaybaz al-Musannaf. So the words are, uh, Ibrahim says, An Ibrahim qal, Kultu lil-Aswad, Manil Quran huma, Manil Quran huma, qal, Naam, yani al muawwizatain So Ibrahim asked al-Aswad, are the muawwizatain part of the Quran? And he replied, yes. Another uh, mm, uh, student is al-Sharbi, -Sh -Al and uh, the words are, uh, this is also reported in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, and the words are, an Hussain an Sharbi qala al muawwizatan min al-Quran. But viewers here, I must interject and also give my own comment that Perhaps there's, there seems to be an error on the part of al-Baqilani because authorities specify that Ashabi never heard from, from Ibn Masood and therefore he cannot be regarded as a, as a pupil of Ibn Masood. But the case of al-Aswad uh, is there as, as is cited by um, al-Baqilani himself. So the fourth point, we go on to the fourth point which Baqilani makes in this regard. He says that we should now understand the implica implication of deletion because we find there are narratives uh, which say that he would delete uh, the Mu'avvazatayn from the Masaif. Now he says that the question arises is what are these Masaif from which he, he deleted these surahs? They could not have been his own Masaif because he never regarded them to be part of the Quran. So why, how did uh, these words come in that he would strike them off, whereas they were never part of his, his, uh, his uh, own Musayif. They could not have been part of his own, own Musayif. And therefore, he goes on to conclude that other Musayif, which would have been copied from his Musayif, 
would also not have this surah. So it is clear that as far as Abdullah ibn Masood and Masai, which are copied from his Musaf, would not be having this surah, then how come it is said that he would strike them off? Then he makes a supposition. He says that, okay, let's believe that it were, it were the Usmanic Masahif in which these surahs uh, were struck off by him. Now, he says that if this was the case, this could have happened in just two, uh, two circumstances. Either he did this openly in front of everyone or in, in secret. If he did this in open, then this would have caused a great amount of uh, alarm and also annoying. Uh, this would have, have annoyed the rest of the Sahaba because if he would have been openly striking off two surahs which the other Sahaba was, were regarding as part of the Quran, how would they have tolerated this? They must have engaged in debate and a lot of things must have ensued and this never happened. And also he says that uh, you know, this, this is something which also needs to be understood that uh, if he had done it secretly, the other, circum the other case, sir, if he had done it secretly, then this would automatically mean that he is doing something against the consensus of the companions because the rest of the people or the rest of the Sahaba are regarding something to be part of the Quran and he is doing it secretly. So he raises this interesting question that if the whole Ummah is regarding something to be part of the Quran, how can we think that Abu Masood is not regarding them to be the Quran, part of the Quran? So this is the uh, fourth point of critique that he makes. The fifth point views that he raises is that there are many other narratives uh, found in Hadith books which say that the Mu'avizatayn were read by the Prophet uh, in his prayers and he has also cited uh, that uh, there were narratives in which his, these, the, the, the occasion of revelation of these surahs have been mentioned. So it is hard to believe that a, a companion of the stature of Abdullah ibn Masood would not have known that the Prophet had read them in, this, in his prayers or would have regarded to be surahs which were part of the Quran. And he also uh, mentions some of these narratives and although he has not cited uh, the exact source from which he has taken these narratives, but I have endeavored myself to find out the source and just let me uh, cite before you a few of these narratives so that you can see how Baqilani says that in the presence of these narratives, it is hard to believe that Ibn Masood would not have known that uh, these two surahs are part of the Quran. Now the first of this narrative, these narratives is, uh, is, although he does not cite it, it is from Muslim. And the words are, it is reported by uh, Uqba ibn, uh, ibn Amir. He says that, An Uqba ibn Amir, Qal, Qala li Rasulullah uh, anzala, uh, unzila or unzilat alayya ayatin lam yura misluhunna qattu al muavizatain. Uqba ibn Amir stated, the messenger of God said to me, Reveal to me our verses which have no parallel in the past, and they are the Mu'avizatayn. Okay, now another narrative in this regard is uh, also cited, and uh, this is actually, uh, I found it in the uh, Fazail al-Quran of, uh, al of Abu Ubaid al-Qasim ibn Salam, and, and the words are, عن معاذ بن عبد الله بن خبيب عن عبيه قال كنت مع رسول الله كنت مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في طريق مكة ومعه أصحابه فوقعت علينا زبابة من الليل حتى سترت بعض القوم عن بعض فلما أصبحنا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل يا ابن خبيب فقلت ما أقول يا رسول يا رسول الله فقال قل أعوذ برب الفلق فقرأها وقرأتها ثم قال قل فقلت ما أقول فقال قل أعوذ برب الناس فقرأها وقرأتها حتى فرغ منها ثم قال ما استعاذ أو استعان أحد بمثل هاتين السورتين كت عبد الله بن خبيب reports from his father who said I was once with the messenger of God on our way to Mecca and there were other companions with him also the fog at night time enveloped us and some of us became invisible to others. In the morning, the Messenger of God said, Read, O Khubayb, O Ibn Khubayb. I asked, What should I read? He said, Surah Falak. He read it and I also read it. He then said, Read, O Ibn Khubayb. I said, What should I read? He said, Surah Nas. He read it and I also read it. He then said, no one can seek refuge or help better than what can be sought from these two surahs. So uh, these are a few examples, viewers, uh, which tell us, uh, I, there are, he has cited other narratives as well, but I'll content myself uh, in citing just two examples that he has uh, 
uh, presented in his book, and he has actually made this point that in the presence of these narratives, it cannot be believed that Abdullah ibn Masood would not have known that these two surahs were part of the Quran. So this is a summary of the uh, critique which is presented by al-Baqilani. Uh, viewers, let me now move on to another authority in this regard, and he has also presented his uh, criticism on these narratives, and uh, his uh, methodology in crit criticizing these narratives is that he has actually cited uh, the uh, people who have reported these narratives separately, and then he has gone on to criticize each category. And in this regard, he says that the textual variance of all these narratives can be divided into three categories. And the person that I'm talking about, uh, uh, talking to you about is Abdul Latif al-Rahmani. So he is the person who is now, who, uh, whose viewpoint I'm now going to summarize and let you know how he has critically viewed uh, the, uh, the ascription of this fact that Abdullah ibn Masood would not regard the Mu'avizatayn to be part of the Quran. So as I said, he has divided these uh, variants into three broad categories. And all these three categories are actually representations of a, of a person who has reported these uh, narratives. Now the first person uh, to uh, to, uh, that he takes up is Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid al nahai And in this regard, he has actually cited three narratives. Uh, the first of these narratives is recorded uh, <coughs> in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. So the words are, عن من حديث العامش عن أبي إسحاق عن عبد الرحمن بن يزيد قال كان عبد الله يحق المعفزتين من مسائفه ويقول إنهما ليست من كتاب الله. So Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid said that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would erase the معفزتين from his مسائف and would say they are not part of the book of God. So the second narrative which uh, uh, Abdul Latif Rahmani cites on the, uh, for Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid. This is uh, taken from Al Qastalani's Ar uh, Irshad al Sari. And the words are, Qala, uh, the words are, An Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid, Qal, Kana Abdullah Yahukul Mu'avvizatain min al Musaf, wa Yakul, Innama Amara Rasulullah, Ayyutu Avvaza Bihima, Walam Yakun Abdullah Yakrao Bihima, wa Yakul, Innahuma Laysata min Kitabillah. Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would erase the Mu'avvizatayn from the Mus'haf and say, the Prophet was directed to seek refuge through them. And Abdullah would not recite them and say, they are not part of the Book of God. The third narrative that he cites is found in Umdat al-Kari of al-Aini. And the words in this case are, Min tariq al-Amash an Abi Ishaq an Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid an Nahai قال كان عبد الله بن مسعود يحق المعفزتين من مساحفه ويقول إنهما ليست من من القرآن أو من كتاب الله. Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid said that Abdullah ibn Masood would erase the معفزتين from his مساحف and say they are not part of the Quran or the Book of God. So these are the three narratives that uh, Abdul Latif Rahmani cites. And then he criticizes these narratives and he says that his, in his own view, there are a number of points which arise on this narrative. Firstly, he says that Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid is the only person who has reported these words in his, uh, in his narratives, which say, إِنَّهُمَا لَيْسَتَا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ They are not part of the Book of God. He says that in the rest of the narratives which have been reported by his other people, these words are not found. It is only in the narratives of uh, Abdul, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid and Nahai that these words are found, which of, of course casts uh, doubt uh, on the whole scenario. He says that the person who narrates from Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid is Abu Ishaq al Sabiri. And Abu Ishaq al Sabiri, it is known from Mizan al Etadal that he is not a trustworthy person uh, from what he reports from the Kufans. And we know that this narrative is from the Kufans. So, so this is the second point that he raises that Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid. From him, the person reports is Abu Ishaq. And Abu Ishaq, about him, a Zahabi has said in his Mizan al-Etadal that he is not trustworthy in what he narrates from the Kufans. And we know that Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid was himself a Kufi. So therefore, this is the second point of his critique. The third point that he makes in this regard is that Al-Amash reports from Abu Ishaq. So we have Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid uh, reporting this narrative from him. Abu Ishaq al-Sabri is reporting, and from Abu Ishaq, al-Amash is reporting. 
and about Al Amash, uh, according to a Zahabi, as again in his Mizanul Etadal, it is known that he is a Mudallis and does the least from weak narrators, and that there are a lot of uh, discrepancies, uh, istirab as the words go, in his narrative. So therefore, he says that this again is something which needs to, uh, which 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 uh, raises a serious question. The fourth point that he makes is that. Al-Amash is also a Shiite and in accordance with the famous principle of the Sunnis as per which if a person uh, records something which he believes to be true then in that particular uh, or in that particular area his witness shall not be accepted and since according to Rahmani uh, this particular narrative tells us that something has been taken away from the uh, Musaf and which accordingly according to him goes in favor of the Shiite belief that the Quran has been tempered with so therefore in accordance with these uh, the principle of uh, of hadith uh, this narrative shall not be accepted now he makes a fifth point in this regard and he says that if narratives from either Abu Ishaq or Al Amash are not trustworthy from the Kufans then narratives in which both these personalities are present shall be doubly suspicious because both these personalities are present and this of course casts a, a doubt on the narratives of themselves now the sixth point that he makes in this regard is that Abu uh, Abdullah ibn Masood taught a number of students and we know that in the times of the Caliph Umar he says that he was stationed in Kufa and he taught so many uh, students and it is strange that none of his students have reported that their teacher did not regard the, the Mu'avizatayn to be part of the Quran. Now the seventh point that he makes is that had Abdullah really regarded the surahs to be extraneous to the book of God he would have been condemned by his contemporaries and as you can see that uh, there are, these are some of the points which are in common to Al-Baqilani and uh, to Abdul Latif Rahmani but nonetheless they need to be ascribed to their original authority so that we know how people in the past have viewed these narratives. So the seventh point that he makes is that basically had this been the case uh, that uh, he had regarded these two surahs to be extraneous to the Quran then uh, this would have been reported in history and this would have been a source of condemnation for him but we do not find any such condemnation being recorded in history. The eighth point view that he makes is that there is a narrative which says that Abdullah bin Masood himself regarded the Mu'avazatayn to be part of the Quran and then he cites this narrative. So this narrative is found in, uh, in the Hadith books and I am citing it from uh, Suyuti's al durul Mansur and it says An Ibn Masood and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لقد أنزل علي آيات لم ينزل علي مثلهن المعوذتين. So Ibn Masud reports from the Prophet. Indeed, some verses have been revealed to me which have no parallel among other revealed verses, uh, other verses, and they are the Mu'avizatain. So he says that in, on the authority of this narrative, it can be clearly seen that since Ibn Masud is the narrator of this narrative, so he would not have gone against what he is reporting. Now, he also goes on to make uh, another point in this regard and he says that, uh, and this is something which already Bakilani has actually raised, that the Prophet had, uh, must, must have recited these surahs in his, uh, in his uh, prayers and he has also cited that there are many narratives in the canonical books of Hadith and, uh, and other places which regard uh, these surahs to be part of the Quran as they were recited as Quran and it is strange that in the presence of these narratives Abdullah ibn Masood would have gone on to negate that these two surahs are part of the Quran. So this basically is a summary viewers of the critique which uh, Rahmani presents as far as Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid al Nakhai's narratives are concerned. So as I had said earlier, he has actually divided his critique into three separate categories, each category being represented by a person who reports this narrative. So I've just covered the first of these categories. The second one, viewers, is from Al-Qama ibn Qais. Now in the case of Al-Qama ibn Qais, uh, uh, Abdul Latif Rahmani again cites two important narratives. So let me first cite these narratives and then I shall present his critique vis-a-vis uh, -vis these narratives. So the words are, and this is found again in the tafsir of Ibn Kasir, according to uh, Rahmani. So he quotes these narratives from him and he says, An Ibrahim and al qama qal, kana Abdullah yuhakkul mu'avvizatayn mil masahif wa yaqul, innama amara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayin yuta'avvaza bihima wa lam yakun Abdullah yaqra'u bihima. So al qama said, Abdullah ibn Masood would erase the mu'avvizatayn from the musaf and say, the Prophet has directed us to seek refuge through them and Abdullah would not recite them. 
The second narrative uh, that he cites is uh, from Sayyuti Zadurul Mansur, and the words are, An Ibn Masood an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Su'ila an hatayni suratayn, faqal, Kila li kultu, faqulu kama kultu. So this, this says that uh, the Prophet has asked, uh, Ibn Masood, the narrative of Ibn Masood, that the Prophet has asked about these two surahs. He was asked about these two surahs, he was uh, uh, inquired about, and he replied, I have been told and I read, thus you also read the, wa the way I read. This is how the second narrative is recorded. Now, as far as the critique on these narratives is concerned, which, uh, which forms a group, because al Kama ibn Qas is the person who re reports these narratives from uh, Abdullah ibn Masood. So, according to Rahmani, there are three narratives in the chain of narration of these narratives. He, he points out three nar narratives. The first of them is Al-Azraq ibn Ali uh, ibn Muslim. Now, he says that though he is a trustworthy narrator, his siqa, he narrates gharaib, uh, and the words are yughribu. That is why there is no narrative from him in the six canonical books of hadith. So this is his first critique. The second uh, critique is that uh, the second narrator is Hassan, uh, Hassan ibn Ibrahim al-Kirmani. Though he too is generally regarded to be trustworthy, he is not so in the eyes of Nasai, who says that he is laysa bil qawi. According to Ibn Adi, he falters in the narration of hadith and reports narratives which are not reported by any other person. So this is the critique which he has cited regarding Hassan ibn Ibrahim. And the third person which is also found in the chain of narration of these narratives is Asalt ibn Bihram. Now he says that he is trustworthy, however he is from among the Murjaites. And Abu Hatim says that there is no defect in him except that he is a Murjaite. So moreover, we, he says that there is no narrative from him, Asalt ibn Bihram, in the sixth canonical books. So uh, Rahmani says that if in a narrative any of these three narrators exist, then such a narrative will have to be regarded as mu'allal, which means that it possesses a hidden defect. Uh, narrative in which all these three exist become debatable, especially when such a narrative is against trustworthy narratives and is against consensus of the ummah as well. So this is his point of, uh, points of critique. They are basically uh, regarding the chain of narration of the narratives which have been reported by al qama ibn Qais. Now let me move on to the third and final category in this regard. And this is, uh, these are narratives which have been cited by or uh, reported by Zir ibn Hubaysh, who is also a student of Abdullah ibn Masood. Uh, so the first of these narratives, now viewers, uh, in this regard he has uh, cited actually four narratives. So the first of these narratives is also, he has cited from the Tafsir of Ibn Kasir. So the words are, عن عاصم انزر قال سألت سألت ابن مسعود عن المعفزتين فقال سألت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عنهما فقال قيل لي قل فقلت فقلت لكم فقول قال أبي فقال لنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فنحن نقول so in this uh, I must uh, also confess that the letter Qul, uh, which is which occurs as you can see in uh, in your screens that the word Qul, although has been cited by uh, him is occurring in the Tafsir of Nikasir, but in the extant versions, I could not find this letter, but I've still relied on Rahmani and uh, cited it. So the translation would be, Zir said, I asked Ibn Masood about the Mu'avvizatayn. He said, I had asked the Prophet about them. He said to me, I was told, read, and this read or this Qul is actually not found in today's extant versions. So read, thus I read to you, so you also read similarly. Ubay said, so the Prophet read to us, thus we also now read. The second narrative which he cites um, is from Al-Bukhari and from his al jami sahih And the words are, Anzir ibn Hubaysh, Anzir qal, Sa'altu Abay ibn Kaab, Qult, Ya Abal Munzir, Inna akhaka ibn Masood, Inna akhaka ibn Masood, Yaqul kaza wa kaza, Faqala Abay, Sa'altu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Faqala li, Kila li faqultu qal fa nahnu naqul kama qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so zir ibn hubais said i asked ubay o abu munzir your brother ibn masud says such and such a thing he said i asked the prophet he replied i was told and i read thus uh, uh, thus we read in the very manner the prophet read 
The third narrative, uh, which is reported by Zir ibn Hubash, uh, is from the Musnad of Al-Humaydi, and the words are, Zir ibn Hubash, Yaqul, Sa'altu Abay ibn Ka'ab anil mu'avvizatayn, Faqult, Ya abal munzir, Inna akhaka ibn Masood, Yahukkuhuma mil musaf, Faqal, Inni sa'altu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Faqal, Qila li kul, Faqultu, Fannahnu nakul, Kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zir ibn Hubayr said, I asked Ubayy about the Mu'avvizatayn, saying, O Abu Munzir, your brother Ibn Masood erases them from the Mus'haf. He said, I asked the Prophet. He replied, I was told, read. So I read. Thus we read in the very manner the Prophet read. And the fourth and final uh, narrative in this regard, uh, viewers, is uh, recorded in, in the tafsir of Ibn Kasir again. And the words are, An Zir ibn Hubayr qal, Qultu li Ubayy ibn Khab, إن ابن مسعود كان لا يكتب المعفزتين في مصحفه فقال أشهد أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبرني أن جبريل قال له قل أعوذ برب الفلق فقلتها قال قل أعوذ برب الناس فقلتها فنحن نقول ما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Zir ibn Hubayr said, I told Ubay that Ibn Masood would not write the Mu'avvizatain in his Musaf. Ubay said. I bear witness that the Prophet told me that Gabriel said to him, Kul a'uzu bi rabbil falak. The Prophet said, I said these words. Gabriel then said, Kul a'uzu bi rabbil nas. The Prophet said, I read these, I said these words. Thus we read what the Prophet, uh, what the Prophet read. So this is the, these are the four narratives which Abdul Latif Rahmani cites vis-a-vis uh, -vis Zir ibn Hubaysh. And then he says, that these narratives are not trustworthy because there are discrepancies in the way these narratives have been reported. Now he says, the first of them says that Zir asked Ibn Masood about the Mu'avvizatayn who said that he inquired about them from the Prophet. The Prophet had replied that he had been directed to read them. So he read them and so people should also read them. Zir then asked Ubaid about the Mu'avvizatayn who gave exactly the same answer. Now this is one, one, one type of narratives, the first one. He says in the second of them record that Zir had mentioned a statement of Ibn Masood before Ubay without specifying what was said. He did not say. The words are kaza wa kaza. Apparently it does seem that the statement would have been the same as recorded in the first narrative. So it's very logical to assume what the first narrative had said. The second is actually citing them but in a vague manner by saying kaza wa kaza. He says that this is further corroborated by what is mentioned in at tabrani cited earlier that um, and if this statement of Zir is regarded as correct, then it can be concluded that Ibn Masood never rejected the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran. Because actually, as we have seen from that narrative, he had himself reported this, these to be part of the Quran. Now he says that in the third narrative, Zir has reported the practice of Ibn Masood and not his statement. So in the third narrative, if you recall, viewers, the words are that he had actually, uh, uh, actually cited the practice of Ibn Masood and not uh, his own words, uh, which, is, which is in contrast with the above, three, uh, the, uh, above narratives. So he says that uh, this is something which is in contrast with uh, the other narratives. The words are, O Abu Munzir, your brother Ibn Masood erases them from the Musa. So he cites his practice and not his own words. And in the fourth narrative, the words of Zir, I, Zir are, I told Ubay that Ibn Masood would not write the Mu'avizatayn in his Musa. So he says that the word erases in the previous narrative have been replaced by not right. So he says that this is a kind of a discrepancy. So Ramani concludes on uh, regarding these uh, narratives from Zir ibn Hubaysh that in the wake of these discrepancies it is difficult to surmise that Ibn Masood had rejected the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran. He goes on to say that if the first narrative of uh, first of Zir's narrative is concerned, if you recall, you can just uh, rewind and see the first of the narratives, then it in fact proves otherwise. It in fact proves that Ibn Masood regarded the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran. And this narrative is corroborated by the second one recorded by Al-Bukhari Al Al as well as by At-Tabarani. So if you recall that in the first narrative, the words are so explicit. The words are, Zir said, I asked Ibn Masood about the Mu'avvizatayn. He said, I asked the Prophet about them. He said to me, I was told, read. And then, of course, the rest of the narrative. So he says that in the... In the presence of these words, how can we see and how can we conclude that Ab Abdullah bin Masood, in fact, did not regard the Mu'avvizatayn to be part of the Quran? 
finally he says that if we sum up um, these, uh, the, these uh, categories, we can say that uh, uh, first of all, there are discrepancies and contradiction in the variance. And in the presence of these discrepancies, uh, we cannot uh, accept these narratives. Then he says that they, the narratives are also suspect. And then finally he says that if, even if the above two flaws are not regarded, then these nar narratives are against the consensus in Tawatar of the Ummah and hence they should not be accepted. And he says that precisely for these reasons, he's, there are some past authorities which, which say that these narratives are wrongly ascribed to Abdullah bin Masood. And then he cites those authorities. I'm going to cite a few of them just to make his point uh, stronger. He says that thus, for example, Ibn Hazm. He says that وَكُلُّ مَا رُوَيَا عَنِ بْنِ مَسُودِ مِنْ أَنَّ الْمُعْوِزَتَيْنِ وَأُمِّ الْقُرَانِ لَمْ تَكُنْ فِي مُصْرَفِهِ فَكِزْبٌ مَوْزُورٌ لَا يَسِحْ وَإِنَّمَا سَحَّتْ عَنْهُ قِرَاتْ آسِمْ عَنْ زِرِ بْنِ حُبَيْشْ عَنِ بْنِ مَسُودِ وَفِيهِمَا أُمُّ الْقُرَانِ وَالْمُعْوِزَتَانِ So this is what Ibn Hazm uh, has said in his uh, al and all that is narrated from Ibn Masood that the Mu'avvizatayn in Surah Fatiha were not in the Mus'haf is false and concocted. Words are for kizbun, mawzurun. Because the chain of narration of the reading of Asim from Ibn Masood through Zirb ibn Hubayish, there is both Surah Fatiha and uh, Mu'avvizatayn. And then, uh, viewers, he goes on to cite Imam Nabavi. He says, Ajma uh, al-Muslimoon ala anna al-Mu'avvizatayn wal-Fatiha min al-Quran. وَأَنَّ مَنْ جَهَدَ مِنْهَا شَيْءٍ كَفَرَ وَمَا نُقِلَا عَنِ بْلِ مَسُودِ بَاطِلِ There is a consensus among the Muslims that the Mu'avvizatayn and Surah Fatiha are surahs of the Qur'an. A person who rejects this has committed an act of disbelief. The narratives attributed to Ibn Masood in this regard are false. The words are batil. And finally, uh, viewers, let me cite uh, uh, a Razi, uh, which obviously has been quoted by uh, Abdul Latif Rahmani. He says, وَالْأَغْلَبْ عَلَى الزَّنْ أَنَّ نَقْلَ هَذَا الْمَزْهَبْ عَنِ بْنِ مَسُودِ نَقْلٌ كَازِبٌ بَاطِلٌ This has been cited by Razi in his, tafsir, tafsir, in his tafsir. And it says that it is more probable that what has been narrated from Ibn Masood about the Mu'avvazatayn has been wrongly and baselessly attributed to him. So viewers, this is a summary uh, which I have presented today before you regarding the critiques of uh, Abu Bakr ibn Tayyib al-Baqilani, which he has uh, cited in his Al-Intisar, and by Abdul Latif Rahmani, which he has cited in his Tariq al-Quran. And I, had, I wish that I present these summary, this summary of their critiques before you, so that uh, I will in the next session uh, build up and represent my own view on these critiques, as well as my own input on how these narratives of rejection of the Mu'avazatayn as ascribed to Abdullah ibn, ibn Masood should be viewed. Akulu qali haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisayar al-muslimina wal-muslimat.